Good evening, Trey Flair family. Welcome back to the Nightly Breakdown, where we break down what happened today in the stock market, as well as give you an idea of what we're looking at into tomorrow. Now, before we head over to conduct a technical analysis of the SPY and five stocks, let's look at some key points to get a broader view of where we stand. So to the first key point, peak economic growth. So we definitely saw stocks lose some ground last week, but as we will see, we still remain in an uninterrupted uptrend. Some things that we are noticing though is a shift in the tone of the market. Yield continue to go lower the reflation trade continues to fizzle out and defensive stocks have been getting more and more attention this is all due to concerns of this being our peak economic growth and this comes from rates going lower even though we're getting higher inflation we also saw our pmi peak in may and in the past we have seen an, on average a 0.6 percent decline in 10-year yields in the following 12 months after the pmi has peaked and when you look at the yields they have gone lower and they look like they could go lower and as you can see here on friday there was strength in bonds we were leaning again to safety or overall the market's appetite for risk has just kind of sailed off and that's really reflected through the russell the iwm which really sold off last week so why is all this why are the bonds going lower so we've actually got a few factors that i think could have uh, caused this move in bond even with the inflation report being higher than expectations one is that investors believe jerome powell powell did speak last week week after the CPI report and he stuck to what he has been saying. He says that substantial further progress is still a ways off and he did mention that the variants could pose a threat though. And then we also have that China news where they're spurring liquidity in their economy with their reserve requirement ratio because they had lower than expected Q2 growth. And all of this leans towards a tightening US economy and possibly an expanding Chinese economy. The only reason that bond yields in the US US would act like this why would they go lower because investors think that these rates are going to remain low and that there's gonna be some sort of economic slowdown maybe because jobs aren't coming back fast enough maybe it's the Delta variant and the news spreading about that so basically this fear is that this stimulus all this money flowing into our economy was a dud and that's why we're seeing this move in yields and I don't really expect it to continue or at least all that much I think towards the end of the year we'll really start to hear more about taper talks and yields will spike back up up and that will cause some volatility but even though this economic data is really important and bonds have been taking the news it might not be the highlight this week because we've got a big earnings week so we're really kicking off earnings season or the two weeks that are going to be the meat of earnings this week economic data is important but usually it won't cloud out earnings and um, I really want to be watching a few of these sectors I really want to watch retail and restaurants uh, the staples the consumer staples sector so heading into earnings we saw really good retail retail sales data on Friday and it was great and we have seen a lot of companies like Pepsi post historic earnings and we want to see if this trend is going to continue and we want to see if the market will react so other than staples I'm really going to be watching utilities and healthcare headed into earnings that's where really most of the strength has been as far as tech the key earnings to watch is Netflix this week they're going to be leading off tech earnings that's going to be on Tuesday some other key earnings coming up are Verizon IBM Coca-Cola Twitter Honeywell and Johnson and Johnson these earnings should be really the main focus unless bonds start making you know any larger volatile moves we also want to see if the bonds react to any of these earnings moves next let's head over to our last key point which is as always our indices and our sectors so on Friday our indices were all red notice that Russell leading the way on the downside and then we had the Dow leading the way Nasdaq following and then spy right behind all closing around 8.8 percent to the downside we had four sectors close positive. We had utilities, healthcare, consumer staples, and real estate all close positive. Utilities was the leader on Friday. I really want to watch utilities heading into earnings. On the downside, we had energy, materials, financials, and consumer discretionary. Also notice that all of our volatility indices were all up. Just something to keep in mind as we head into next week. So now that we have a broader idea of where we stand, let's head over to do a technical analysis of the SPY ETF, which tracks the S&P 500 index so looking at this spy we kind of need to take a step back to the weekly to see this move on a bigger scale and if you look at it on the weekly time frame it's not screaming bearish yet also notice that we did end up creating a higher high and a higher low than last week and for this close to be screaming bearish, you would look for a close through at least 50% of this green candle over here. 
and that level would have been around $430 and as you can see we closed above there so nothing extremely bearish yet as it stands on the weekly also notice that all of our moving averages on the weekly remain intact including the nine day and we really haven't even made a move back towards any longer term daily. support trend line zooming into the daily we noticed that this short term support trend line was broken on friday and this suggests a potential for some more short term pullback but nothing about this says that we have to sell off immediately especially with a lot of big earnings this week we also have our 20 day moving average here coming to meet up this support at 430 dollars some more selling on monday i wouldn't be surprised to go down to this level at 428.75 we have those earnings this week this is something to keep in mind look for reversal patterns off of these support levels rather than going out and trying to call a top here looking for opportunities here on these pullbacks not trying to fight the overall bullish trend even though it is kind of slowing down next over to the queues looking at our tech and growth so as we can see here a lot of the big cap tech stocks were selling off on friday and just like the s p we really haven't even pulled back to any moving averages yet and as it sits this thing could be ready for some more pull back and I want this thing to pull back to like it's 382 retracement find a reversal pattern and then take off and go higher again the Nasdaq and the big tech stocks have really been outperforming in the second half so far and we're kind of getting a big cap safety move so I want to see if this thing pulls back find some support and keeps going higher so looking to play this pullback as an opportunity on the queue so now let's dive into our watch list starting off with Unilever and like we mentioned on Friday defensive stocks are holding up these are stocks that tend to do well in a risk off environment and as IWM shows the small caps and risk on stocks are selling off this is telling us that the market is kind of getting rid of its risk on appetite and for those of you who don't know what Unilever is it's a huge company that owns a lot of different store brands some recognizable ones are Axe Dove, Don, Suave, Lipton, Ragu, Country Croc, and plenty of others. So big cap stock, well-known stuff, stuff you know. Great retail sales data on Friday. So looking at the daily here, the first thing I notice is the huge influx of volume on Friday. And I also noticed this lower wick, it's right off of the prior day's range here. And the green close is closing above highs above these wicks at 6012. I also like that we technically broke this reverse head and shoulders diagonal neckline, but I really think the break is gonna be at the head one highs at 6033. So I'm really looking to uh, take the break of that 6033 level this is all happening right off of that 200 day sma so i like this play especially with good retail sales data and earnings around the corner next up is mrk merck and co and looking at this i can't stop thinking about the next era energy play that we just hit and called out in our discord and with the healthcare sector acting like it has been i'm watching for this thing to break out of this range as it looks right now we're looking to take a break above this 200 day moving average so definitely keeping my my eye on Merck and the rest of the healthcare sector stocks. Another one I'm also watching is Gilead. Next up on the watch list is Micron, and this is actually a short play. And as you can see here, clear break through the 200 day moving average. And looking at this larger range, we just broke it to the downside, and I don't see any support until like $70. And with range rules, we look to double the range and that target would be right around $68. So as it looks, I could say that $70 this week or next week is actually very possible. So keeping my eye on a Micron for a possible play to the downside. Next up is Dominion Energy, ticker symbol D. And this is simply a break of a resistance trend line. We're seeing volume pick up, all three or all four of our moving averages are cleared. And this is a utility sector play. And like I said, I wanna watch utilities heading into earnings in this earnings isn't this week next week but it is right around the corner in august and if i zoom out here this looks like a long drawn out cup and handle formation and now we're breaking the resistance trend line of this bull flag so looking for higher looking all the way up to 78.50 and then 81.10 a full-on breakout puts 86 dollars in reach so i'm keeping my eye on dominion energy especially while the utility sector is so hot next up on the watch list is procter and gamble and everybody knows what procter and gamble is it's a huge huge 
big cap consumer staple. As we can see here, heading into X dividend, heading into earnings, we're getting a lot of steam from Procter & Gamble. We've broken out of this triangle. And now we're looking to take out these highs at 141.12 for a possible move up to uh, around 145 before we see any sellers. So like I said, consumer staple here, big company, a lot of great retail sales data that's coming out. Watch out for Procter & Gamble. A lot of energy heading into X dividend and earnings. And that wraps up tonight's nightly breakdown. If you enjoyed the video, if you gained value, or if you learned something, make sure you hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe so you can get notified whenever we post any live or educational content. If you're looking to join our team and be surrounded and motivated by our online community of traders and investors, as well as gain access to trade signals that let you know whenever we make a trade, check out the link in the description below to join our Discord, gain full access by upgrading to TradeFlare Pro, get half off your first month using the discount code TFPRO2021. But don't be mistaken, we are not financial advisors and none of this is a recommendation. The stock market is risky and you could lose money, so use the information inside these videos at your sole discretion. And as always, you cannot forget that time is your most valuable asset, so quit wasting it. Get up, get out, and go get it, my friend.